Welcome back to another Code OG where we get a small kickback for the season passes and all the gems you're gonna spend on this amazing card if he's good. Mmm, it's the orange juice. Let's put into perspective where the Electro Giant fits among the giants and the golems. The Goblin Giant has a medium move speed. The regular giant, golem, and the Electro Giant has a slow move speed. He costs 8 elixir, which is the same as a golem, but. The golem has a three second deploy time, so the biggest difference is that in double elixir, you build up two more elixir just by waiting for the golem to deploy. The macro strategy can get a little complex. The giant has 3275 health. The electro giant has very similar health, just slightly less than the giant, coming in at 3192 health. The giant has a hit speed of 1.5 seconds and deals 211 damage per punch. The Electro Giant deals 159 damage per punch and has a hit speed of 2.1 seconds. The Giant has 140 DPS. The Electro Giant has 75 DPS. He punches for less damage and punches 40% slower than a regular giant. But there is a reason for that. He can absolutely destroy a tower because of his counter attack mechanic. Heck, even with the princess tickling him, he'll still wreck that princess tower. But there's a special reason for his slow and weaker punch. The lightning rods in his back. It's a very special counter attack mechanic that has a three tile radius around him. This is going to be the same size as Lone's spell. Essentially, this means that once he's within range, every time the Princess Tower attacks him, he'll also reflect 120 zap damage onto the Princess Tower and stun it for 0.5 seconds. There is no cooldown on this counter attack mechanic. A Prince's Tower has a 0.8 second attack speed and gets stunned for 0.5 seconds with his counter attack. After the first attack, it effectively changes your attack speed to 1.3 seconds. Based on the second attack onwards, the Electro Giant's reflected zap damage is 92 DPS on top of his regular 75 DPS. Plus his reflection of 92 DPS on the Prince's Tower, he effectively has 167 DPS against a Prince's Tower. This gives him more DPS than a regular giant. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Although it does cost three elixir more than a giant. That's strictly talking about his damage output per second. He also stuns the Prince's Tower, making her attack 38% slower. Her DPS drops down from 112 to 69 damage damage per second, oh yeah. Essentially against the Prince's Tower that makes him 38% tankier. I want to be clear, he is tankier against the Prince's Tower because of the stun based on her attack speed inside that radius. Any other unit that attacks faster or slower will result in different numbers. But this just goes to show the magnitude of a 0.5 second stun counter attack. A little fun fact, if you rage the Prince's Tower, she'll actually attack faster and hurt herself more against the Electro Giant. Rage does not affect his counter-attack mechanic. All of the math aside, fast attacking units inside of the radius will die fast. Expo will die in only two punches because it reflects so many zaps onto itself. Whereas the Mortar does not reflect any zap damage and it ends up taking the Electro Giant four punches to take out the Mortar. Another interesting thing about the Expo is that its attack speed goes from 0.25 to 0.75 seconds, which is a 66% DPS reduction. It's completely useless against an Electro Giant. Does he hard counter the Expo one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. But will this kill Expo? Absolutely not, because a good Expo player will counter him with Tesla and Rocket Cycle you out. Each time a unit attacks him inside that radius, he will reflect 120 damage per attack and he reflects multiple targets. There is no cooldown. Skeleton Army will die immediately. This means that Skeleton Army will get obliterated by him. But is it worth using Skeleton Army as a last resort? It may actually be worth it since 15 Skeletons will deal 1005 damage before they die, knocking out one third of his health. Goblins have the same effect, but are way worse. They die after two stabs. That's 504 damage to the Electro Giant for two elixir. It just isn't worth it to take over 15% of his health. Goblin Gang, on the other hand, is slightly better because they have ranged Spear Goblins that can be planted outside of his reflection radius. He'll still deal 1300 damage to the Princess Tower, though. But wait! 
there's more it's 120 reflected damage on air units too minion horde will melt after two hits they attack too fast for their own good swarmies are no match for him Mega Minion is going to be more sensible option if you could pick between Minions and Mega Minion. But even the Mega Minion isn't going to survive. It's merely a better option compared to the Minions. This is where we get into the realm of ranged units. Musketeer can help counter him because she stays out of the range of the splash radius. The Electro Wizard and the Mega Knight spawn damage do not activate his reflection mechanic. However, this is where it gets a little funky. He doesn't reflect per unit. He reflects per attack. And Electro Wizard has two attacks, resulting in two reflections for 240 zap damage since he does have two projectiles. Another interesting thing too is the Executioner. He gets shocked twice per attack due to the fact that his axe throws forward and flies back counting as two total attacks. But it gets yeah, freaky. freaky. While it normally makes sense to plant a hunter on top of a tank to ensure all 10 bullets hit, it does not make sense to do that against the Electro Giant. He will literally die, melt, and obliterate to dust. 700 damage, then it vaporizes into thin air. It is not worth it. What you want to do is plant the hunter just outside of that 3 tile reflection radius. He'll land 5 bullets, which will match the DPS of a Musketeer. It's very situational, and if you have the hunter in your deck, you just have to make the best of the situation. Firecracker is a little weird because her attack utilizes a unique mechanic as well, and it splits up. So as of this recording in October of 2020, he does not reflect any damage onto her and is likely a glitch that will be patched in the next coming client update. The Dark Goblin is going to be like a musketeer. His massive range keeps him safe and outside of the Electro Giant's 3 tile reflection radius, but he has a fast attack speed. This means as an Electro Giant user, Tornado is going to be one of the best synergies. It might even replace Poison. Tornado any ranged units towards him and they'll essentially shock themselves to death and it deals a little bit of damage so the minions just die even faster to deal even less damage on him. Maybe they have three Musketeers and you don't have proper counters. It's enough to bring the three Musketeers really low, but we're talking 11 Elixir for 9. That's not very realistic. If you're only dealing with two Musketeers, it might be worthwhile to Tornado, but you really have to consider the situation. Are they going to hard counter? Can you afford to be down Elixir to get a few extra hits in their tower? You're committing 11 Elixir just to counter those 6 Elixir Musketeers. I'm just putting it out there because it's a cool interaction. One interesting thing is that he will stun a Goblin Giant due to the fact that it has Spear Goblins in his back. The Giant Goblin will get stunned while inside of the radius of the Electro Giant. It counters Ram Rider really well, just because her ensnare activates his counterattack and reflects a zap onto her really rapidly. She just ensnares way too fast for her own good, and it just locks her into place and keeps stunning her. So a giant gets countered by Lumberjack pretty well, and an Electro Giant has the same health as a giant. You would think that a Lumberjack counters him very well, but he attacks way too fast for his own good. The reflected damage is way too devastating and actually kills the Lumberjack. The Electro Golem survives long enough to deal over 1700 damage to the Prince's Tower. This is just an absurd interaction considering that a Lumberjack normally can counter a regular giant. This is a prime interaction that helps differentiate Lumberjack from Mini P.E.K.K.A. The Mini P.E.K.K.A. only needs two swings. The Mini P.E.K.K.A. lives, everyone's happy, except for your Prince's Tower, because he'll still get a zap on the Prince's Tower one or two times. An interesting counter to Electro Giant are Zappies. They're actually pretty decent. If you place them just right so that they stagger their attack to chain stun, one, two, three, one, two, three, they will completely stop him from connecting to the tower. But do not rely on just Zappies because it will be supported. Or if they have Fireball, you're doomed. On the flip side, a Night Witch is horrendous by herself. Not only does she take a ton of damage, but her bats die after attacking him once. It's really depressing to see because he'll deal over 1,000 damage to the tower. Inferno Dragon does not counter it that well. A lot of people might assume that it doesn't counter it at all. I mean, of course, if you plant the dragon directly on top, it's gonna get perma stunned. Worse than four Electro Wizards. The proper way to counter an Electro Giant with the Inferno Dragon is to place him outside of that 3 tile radius on the Electro Giant. The Inferno Dragon's range is 3.5 tiles and can outrange the Reflected Sun completely. But because you have to actually wait until he's connected to the tower, that's still a lot of damage and there's going to be better counters out there. Something more effective than the Inferno Dragon is the Fisherman. Since he's got as much health as a Giant versus 3 Crown Towers, he's not such a big baddie. 
Swarm cards are usually not really a good counter to him, but Barbarians are an exception. In a perfect world, they bridge plant an 8 Elixir Electro Golem with no support. Barbarians will do an excellent job at stopping him and will survive with a little bit of health. Sparky does a really fine job at defending against him, just because he only shocks units inside of his circle and only after they've attacked him. Sparky will never be interrupted. Her DPS isn't the craziest, he'll still deal a thousand damage on the tower. Assuming she is in the radius, the worst thing that will happen is that she'll be stunned for 0.5 seconds after she attacks him. By no means is this an Electro Wizard situation. On the same note, Barbarian Hut is actually a positive elixir trade for 7 elixir. You can't go wrong. The huts soak up some damage and the huts survive with little over half the health. A goblin cage can completely stop it too, but let's be real. Ain't nobody gonna be bridge planting an unsupported electro giant. You should be prepared to plant multiple cards and it's okay because he is 8 elixir. If you have a building like a goblin cage to hold him in place, you can pair it up with an inferno dragon to take him out. He's like a golem, don't expect to counter him for 4 elixir. One of the cheapest counters in the game is going to be the 3 elixir cannon. It fully pulls him with the perfect placement 4 tiles from the river, 3 tiles from the princess tower. This is assuming for some reason your opponent didn't support him, maybe you rushed the bridge in the opposite lane and exhausted their elixir. You gotta remember, this is an 8 elixir card, it's okay to use multiple cards to counter it. Ice Wizard with basically anything else does a really good job. Mega Minion isn't the best example, but I just wanted to emphasize that was a 6 elixir defense for 8. Ice Wizard or any buildings paired with any of his counters will completely stop him. I don't care what's behind, put a bomb tower and an Ice Wizard and he will not make it through. Then you can address the support units that are likely going to be behind him. Inferno Tower does stop him because it can completely knock him out before he gets within the 3 tile range needed to reflect a zap and interrupt the Inferno Tower's attack because his zap is only activated when he is being attacked so you can still use your Swarmy to take care of supporting troops behind. Okay, so if you're using the Electro Giant and you see the Inferno Tower, as scary as the Inferno Tower may seem, it if you literally just zap it, he's now within range and will infinitely stun the Inferno Tower. Another thing too is that if you bring bats to distract the Inferno Tower, the Electro Giant will now be within range and it is impossible to deal any damage once he's within that 3 tile radius. Because tank killers like the P.E.K.K.A and the mini P.E.K.K.A work so well countering him, you can pair him up with the fisherman and pull them like you would a giant. Even though the Electro Giant has the same elixir cost and move speed as the Golem, he plays most similarly to the Goblin Giant because of his passive attack. His biggest ability is to zap everything that hits him instantaneously for 120 damage. This makes him one of the most unique cards in the game, and using Tornado to pull range units towards him results in them killing themselves. If those units deal too much damage or have too much health, they plant them on the inside and you can also tornado them towards the other lane. All defensive buildings and spawners defend him alone quite well, so pairing him with Earthquake or Lightning will make defending him a little bit more difficult. Being 8 Elixir makes him an instant beatdown archetype, and it's similar to a Golem deck. Sometimes you'll just have to ignore damage or even give up a tower entirely to gain more Elixir to 3 crown in the opposite lane. He is quite expensive, so having Elixir Collector in your deck gives you that much more support for your E-Giant push, especially if they don't punish it. Having a constant flow of units from a Night Witch or even a Tombstone is even more annoying with the Electro Giant because only melee units that defend him well are strong single hitters, like a P.E.K.K.A. Once he gets zapped, he will retarget onto skeletons because of their short range. If your Electro Giant connects to the tower, you can Miner onto the tower to retarget the hits onto the Miner. Just make sure to plant him against the tower because both the Miner and the Electro Giant have the same range. One other thing that makes him incredibly underwhelming is that a level 6 Electro Giant reflects a level 6 zap worth of damage, which is 120 damage. But if you look at level 13 Electro Giant, it still reflects 120 damage. His reflection doesn't scale up in damage. He reflects 120 damage at level 6, at level 9 tournament standard, at level 13 max ladder. And that's why he feels a little underwhelming right now. And that's why I think if they do change this, he's gonna be really good and he's gonna be really fun to play. They're gonna need to do a hard client update for this because they're gonna need to change the code. So they can't do that in a balance update. It'll be in the next update if this change does get implemented.
Overall, I'm super excited about the Electro Giant. He has a very unique mechanic and adds a new element to the game. It'll be interesting to see how the Electro Giant will impact the meta if he does become meta. He feels like a mixture of all three giants plus the added element of electricity. Beatdown is my least played archetype to be honest, but this card has been genuinely so fun to play thus far. He pairs well with Tornado, almost as if you don't even need poison with him anymore. He works well with Zap because that just straight counters the Inferno Tower. For now, I feel like he's a little underwhelming and could stand to get a bit more health, especially because he costs 8 Elixir and doesn't play like a Golem since the Golem has a 3 second deploy time allowing you to accumulate a little bit more elixir for a really big push and the golem just straight up has way more health maybe he's really good with electro spirit we don't know yet but stay tuned to find out because we will be releasing information about that later on thanks for watching everyone and thank you everyone for using code oj